While camping at the Oasis, we took an afternoon to walk a mile into town to explore the historical part of San Ignacio. San Ignacio is a small oasis town located in the arid central desert between Guerrero Negro and Santa Rosalia in Baja California Sur. Although less than a thousand people live here, it has a very cute central plaza and a good-sized Jesuit mission church, which was built in 1786. It is hard to believe that a spring-fed pond and small river created this lush green oasis where date palms grow in abundance. After a day of exploring the small mission town and relaxing by the spring-fed pond, it is time to continue our ride. So we're leaving our little oasis of San Ignacio and heading to Santa Rosalia today. Should be back on the coast by nightfall. It's a nice little, uh, nice little break. I mean, it was cute town. Definitely a must if you're coming this way. So down the road we go. We've gone about 25 miles since we left camp this morning. Our little oasis has been steadily up the whole way. Now we got this. days but uh, yeah today was about almost 48 miles and almost 2600 feet of climbing so not bad just man it was hot though I got up to like 88 degrees which is pretty intense out in the desert I know it can be hotter so anyway see ya we're gonna go eat before leaving town we go out to do some sightseeing Santa Rosalia is an old copper mining town. It was founded by the French in 1884 and mining continued until it was closed down for the first time in 1954. The French influence is still present in the architecture of the colorful wooden buildings in the historical part of town. And of course the metallic church Iglesia Santa Barbara which was built by Gustave Eiffel in France and then later relocated to Santa Rosalia bears some of the French charm although it quite fits the industrial setting. There are still old furnaces, converters and old mining machineries present everywhere and the old mining company offices are now converted into an industrial museum.
As we are leaving Santa Rosalia, we have to climb up a short but steep hill. But lucky for us, we were greeted by the local farewell committee on top, which was happy to send us off on our way to Mulleche. Mulleche is about a 40 mile bike ride from Santa Rosalia through more desert landscape and the route becomes more hilly as we get closer to town. Moleche is another oasis town, located where the Santa Rosalia River flows into the beautiful Sea of Cortes. Besides camping by the river and enjoying the beach at sunset, we also plan on visiting the old Spanish mission church. But plans don't always pan out the way we plan on. We spend an afternoon in the tent trying to dry out our freshly washed laundry during a freak storm. The mission church was closed. And to top it off, our hard drive crashed later on during our travels and we lost most of our footage from Muleche. We leave Moleche in the morning to head towards Loreto. However, we don't get very far. Maybe the frequent breaks to enjoy the scenery didn't help. But how could we not stop to look at the stunning coastline whenever it presents itself? So after a short 17 mile ride, which took forever, we decide we have to spend at least one more night camping along the amazing Sea of Cortes. Lucky for us, we found Coyuri Beach conveniently located right after we had a big late lunch and set up camp under an empty palapa. We asked around who to pay and we were told a man would come by in the morning to collect 200 pesos. However, we were only charged 150 because we are on bicycles. Apparently, bicycle touring comes with its perks. Since we only rode a short distance yesterday, we have a long ride ahead of us today. Right after leaving our camp at the beach, we hit a gradual climb out of the small bay. Unfortunately, it is not going to be the only climb on our ride to Loreto. Today we have 68 miles and over 4,000 feet of climbing to do before reaching Loreto.
two, three, go. Hey there, good morning. Sorry, I'm just doing a little weird antics before I start recording. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, uh, we arrived in Loretto two nights ago in the dark. Probably the last six miles, 10 kilometers was in the dark. Had no idea where we were going, but we found us a very lovely little place to stay. And then yesterday we took the morning off and just did the uh, the tourist things around the historical area. Checked out the, the the church and you know the typical touristy stuff. Very cute little historical area. They got it done up real nice down there. Today we are leaving, and instead of staying on Highway One, we are exiting Highway One just south of Loretto. I mean Loretto is pretty much I can almost do a rock to it, and we're heading to a mission or a church. Uh, called San, San Javier. But after that, yeah, we'll be crossing all the way over to the other side of the Baja again, picking up the other Highway 1 that runs parallel to this Highway 1 and continuing south from there. So let's, uh, let's get on down there, huh? We got about, it's about 20 miles to San Javier. San Javier is a tiny village at the end of the paved road. The biggest and only attraction is another Jesuit mission, which was founded in 1699. As we leave San Javier, the nicely paved road ends and we find ourselves cycling on a rough, rocky dirt road. It is still a long way to the other side of the Baja and it is slow riding on the rough path with our fully loaded bikes. Fortunately, we come by the Rancho Santo Domingo just before nightfall, where the ranger is more than happy to let us camp for the night. In the morning, we wake up and enjoy our coffee while watching and playing with all the animals around us. There must be about 80 young kids and all of them want some attention.
Eventually, though, it is time to get back on our bikes. We only have about 35 miles to go before we reach Highway 1 again. Although it is a fairly short distance, it takes us all day to cycle on this bumpy dirt road. We are two long cycling days away from La Paz and from what we can tell there is not much in between. There are hardly any stores to resupply and there is only one place to get a room from a tire repair shop along the route. Also we are trying to catch a ferry to mainland Mexico which is supposed to leave La Paz in four days. Otherwise we might have to wait another week for the next one. For 200 bucks both of us get to board the overnight ferry with our bikes. A cabin is not included but we can lay down our mats pretty much anywhere on the floor to sleep. And our tickets buy us dinner at the cafeteria. What are you doing? I'm making my dinner. What do you got? Let me see. It's some sort of chicken. In the morning we arrive in Mazalan on mainland Mexico where our adventure will continue. If you liked our video, please consider supporting our channel by rolling over that like button, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, and as always, feel free to share our videos. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.